Do you remember who you were before other people's version of you became your reality? I know it's a big question. I'm doing some research for an event that I'm holding in October, and it's about teaching people the tools they need and understanding what the motivation is to get them from where they are to where they want to be. And during my research, I came up with some numbers from the World Health Organization about the suicide rate, the global suicide rate, and the numbers are shocking. It's 800,000 people die every year from suicide. That number is higher than the homicide rate. It breaks down to one person every 40 seconds. And the more and more that I research suicide, it always comes from some kind of traumatic event or somewhere that people are stuck and they just don't have the tools to be able to get out from it. And yes, we all have problems without a doubt. What I have come to understand in my practice is that our suffering doesn't necessarily come from the reality that is because the reality that is is now over two minutes ago. Whatever I started talking about two minutes ago is done. Now we're here. The suffering comes from the story that we create around the noun. I like to call the noun, the challenge. It's always a person, a place, or a thing. And it's the story that we create around a moment that happened with a person, a place, or a thing. I know for myself, as I became a life coach and before then, I've lived a life. I've, I've experienced a ton of hardship. That is life, such as life, yes? The ebbs and flows, the ups and downs. And what I can say for myself is that I learned the tools to be able to navigate my emotions and feelings and address the fears probably in my 30s. It would have been so much more helpful to know those tools back when I was in my teens or being able to express myself as a young person. So I've made it my mission to be able to share these tools with people so they can address the challenging situations of their life, be able to navigate through the emotions and be able to get through it relatively unscathed, preferably learning the lesson and understanding what, that whatever that moment was, the hurt of the challenge was just that. And that to be able to look at the bigger picture and say, was I part of that? Was I not part of that? Be able to forgive the person and be able to take the lesson and move forward. Hi, my name is Vanessa and I'm a transformational life coach. I live in Sweden. I have a thriving practice and I have such pleasure from being able to teach people the tools and techniques that they need in order to build their confidence and be able to address the challenges of their past, gain their self-worth and live the life that they wanna live. Today, we're gonna to be talking about just that. How do we address those fears that keep us stuck from a moment that happened in the past that prevents us from living as fully cognitive cognizant and aware human beings in the present as we move forward. There are three great questions that I teach in my practice. And I also explain to my clients the importance of motivation because your motivation is a fuel that drives you forward or keeps you where you are. So we'll start with the motivation. Motivation comes from either within you, which is intrinsic, or comes from outside, which is extrinsic. One of my fantastic loyal followers here on this platform wrote me a question and asked me to really explain in an easy way what is intrinsic and extrinsic. Well, I know that she loves dogs, so this one is for you, Kelly. Okay, so intrinsic. You know that you love dogs. They make you happy wherever you are, they come to you. It is something that is just true and honest and inherent to you. It is you, right? So now let's take extrinsic. 
extrinsic always deals with the environment. It comes from the outside, right? So let's take your mom, for example. Your mom, when she was a child, she got bit by a dog and it hurt her. She never processed through that hurt and pain of the dog and it stayed with her for her entire life. So when you came and your brother came, she had such a fear of a dog. So whenever you two walk by and there was a dog, she would grab your hands and go, no, dog, bad, they bite. And she instilled that fear in you and your brother. Now within you, you have this natural sense of, man, I love a dog. I, they feel like it's something I should touch. They're coming to me all the time. And your mother would grab you by the arm and say, no, don't touch. Dogs are bad. Now that narrative became part of your story. Even though you intrinsically like a dog, extrinsically, that story became part of your everyday story. And that's where the suffering comes in because it's not part of your natural story. Let me know in the comments below if I was further able to clarify by using your example of your love for dogs. All right, so now we move forward. When you use intrinsic and extrinsic as a motivator, think about it as fuel. If you have a fear or you don't have a fear or you have emotions and thoughts about a circumstance that have happened that fill you with fear, what is the motivation? Is it something from within you? Here are the three questions. You ready? From what past experience do your emotions and fears come from? Number two, is the fuel you're adding to your emotions or fears intrinsic or extrinsic? Number three, which is the hardest one, is what are you going to do about it? The everyday choices that we make in life greatly impact our quality of life, period. So understanding that we as human beings have the power to navigate how our life goes is so critical and important. And the ability to solve the challenges that prevent people from moving forward is the key to creating the type of life you want. These three questions I use in my practice and have garnered great success with my clients because they're able to look at a noun, a person, place, or thing surrounding a challenge that they're going through. And by writing down these three questions and being able to be super honest with themselves, which being honest is very scary because anything that we do, honesty, that means that you have to be accountable and reliable for whatever it is that you're doing. So if you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing and you know it, writing down these three questions are going to hold you accountable and reliable to that. And there's a great freedom in that because somehow you don't have a place to hide anymore. Somehow you really are accountable to yourself. And what happens when you go through and answer these three questions and understand what the motivation is, what is the fuel that's driving that challenge that's preventing you from moving forward, then you really get a clear picture and indication that it's you. And every emotion and fear that we feel, look at it because it drives you in the direction of addressing whatever it is that's in front of you. And I truly believe that understanding how to have these tools and have the conversations with yourself will allow us to navigate life in a more clear and defined way. And it doesn't mean not being emotional because that's crazy. I mean, emotions are like the sauce and the greatness of life, being able to express yourself in such a great way. The thing about emotions, which is always that double-edged sword, is that you don't want to use emotions to make a decision. If you are afraid of something, ooh, I can give you a perfect example. <gasps> I give you a perfect example. Okay, so 11 years ago, my, my now husband, um, we started dating. I lived in the US, he lived here in Sweden. And I remember for a year we dated. And as many of you know, I have a son who's autistic. And um, 
it was a great dilemma with my family and my friends about moving. And I remember it was such a hard, hard thing to have to process because on one hand, I have a great, I had a great life in the US. I had a fantastic infrastructure that took care of my everyday needs for myself and for my son. And um, I had a great support system with, with, our, with my friends and my family. And it was just perfect. And then comes this man into my life whom I loved, loved and loved, greatly impacted my life in such a way and allowed me to really love again, love my son, love my family, love his family. And we're looking at creating something for just the two of us. The greatest fear I had during that process is, can I move to Sweden and create another environment where my son and I are supported, that we can be able to thrive? It was such a scary question, a scary process. And my friends were in my 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 ear all the time saying you don't need to go over there i mean he's a great guy and everything but you can find another guy i mean it's so much safer here everything is so much better here why are you going to go there i mean it's so scary it's another country it's another language it's another culture you know everything here we love you we're here we're safe stay here and it was so easy to get sucked into that version of my life that was through my friends and not through myself. So when I sat down and wrote down the three questions, I was able to see that my greatest fear was that of not being able to establish the same type of network here to support my son. And do you know what? 10 years later, we have an even better support system for him that I could have ever created in the US. And by being able to write down those questions and really assess to get past the fear, to get past the noise of what my friends want for me and really hold myself accountable for what I wanted for myself allowed me to look at the greater picture. And the greater picture is my son is living his best life. He is so good. I have a partner that's loving and challenging and supportive and driven and we have so many of the same qualities and we just love and support each other and have built an incredible life and continue to expand on that. And I'm so grateful and thankful that I was able to use those questions to be able to move me forward and make the best decision for me. That is the underlining purpose of being able to have these kind of questions and dialogues and self-reflection upon yourself by being able to look at a situation and assess it for the reality of what it is and getting past the minutia of the fear of our emotions and being able to be driven and look at it for what is it that I want to create out of this situation as we move forward, period. There's nothing more to it. And by being able to have the tools, it holds us accountable and reliable to ourself. And it doesn't mean that we're not accountable and reliable with the people that we love. However, their version of us is not part of our narrative. The version of ourself and what we want and how do we drive and create our life, that is what is most important. You know, I love a recap. So moving forward and being able to be fully present and honoring yourself and making decisions from that point comes with understanding what is the motivation behind your actions or inactions, which is either intrinsic or extrinsic. And it's always about asking yourself those three little questions. From what past experience do your emotions and fears come from? Number two, what is the fuel that's motivating? your emotions and fears. Is it intrinsic or is it extrinsic? And number three, which is really the most important one and the hardest one because it makes you accountable, is what are you gonna do about it? I trust as it information allows you to be able to navigate your life in a way in which you live it for yourself. Fast forward to the end of your life and there you are lying in bed, hopefully surrounded by your loved ones. 
the question that you lie in silence and ponder is that of have I fulfilled everything that I wanted to do or will you die restless and resentful for not making the choices to live the life as you want hey guys remember to share thumbs up with a like and subscribe to my platform share the video with whomever you know really needs to get this information so that they can live their best life and know that every Thursday right here I put out a new video like today I use Kelly because she writes in the comments is always sending back supportive um, supportive vibe and asking great questions if you also want to be featured in one of the videos with one of your questions write it below let's get the conversation going and know if there's another topic or something that you want to know relating to relationships and how to be better just write it below if it falls in line with our theme I'll research it and we'll put it out here remember when we value ourselves we value each other take care